South Korea has been seeing a fresh wave of coronavirus cases, which local authorities say will be tamed after reaching its peak next week. Should we still get ourselves vaccinated? We are joined by Dr. Alice Tan this morning. Long time no see. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. So why are we seeing a spike in the number of infections now? I mean, what's causing the spread of the virus? Is it because it's summertime? Well, yeah, so when we look at viral transmission dynamics, uh, it usually has to do with three factors. The first relates to the virus, the second relates to the host, and the third relates to the environment. So as you mentioned, during the summer months, it was very hot, very humid, a lot of rain, more people were spending time indoors with the windows closed, so the ventilation was not good. In terms of the virus factors, uh, right now in South Korea, the KP.3 subvariant of Omicron is a dominant strain. We know that it's highly transmissible, also has what we call immune escape properties. In other words, people who are previously vaccinated or who've had an uh, infection, say more than four to six months ago, they are all uh, vulnerable to being reinfected with COVID. And so that's another reason why we're seeing a surge. And then in terms of the host, so people, not a lot of people uh, receive the latest uh, updated vaccine that was available against XBB strain of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have a lot of people who are vulnerable to getting infected and also unfortunately a lot of people who are vulnerable to having severe disease doing, uh, due to COVID. And then of course, all of the traveling, the congregating, uh, people in tight, crowded spaces, um, those have all been factors contributing to this current surge. Well, does that mean that coronavirus will go around like this during the winter time? Because sooner or later, we'll be complaining about how cold it gets here in South Korea. Right. So what we've seen um, during the pandemic and even after the pandemic was declared over is every four to six months, there does seem to be a surge. The problem is right now, um, as the KP.3 variant uh, at some point, it will start to wane. It looks like the LB.1 subvariant will gain dominance. And so what we might see is a decrease in cases, a decrease in hospitalizations, but we might see sort of a surge on surge pattern. In other words, we may not go down to those very low levels that we saw about two and a half months ago. Uh, and we may stay at sort of an elevated plateau going into winter and early spring. And with the LB.1 uh, subvariant, which is expected to be even more transmissible and have immune escape properties, we may see more cases going into the winter and early spring. Well, Dr. Tan, sometimes it's hard to tell what we've been infected with, just a regular cold or COVID. Tell us how can we diagnose the symptoms, you know, ourselves without going, uh, having to go into the doctors? Right. So the best way to self-diagnose is to use a rapid antigen at home testing kit. And I, I understand that um, it has been a little bit difficult to try to access these home test kits recently, but the government did announce that uh, during the month of August, uh, companies, domestic companies have been busy making about 5.6 million uh, of these home test kits. So it, they should be available either online, in convenience stores or at pharmacies. Um, they were a little bit difficult to access previously, but hopefully um, the supply will meet the demand. Uh, and that is really the best way to test and find out whether or not it's COVID or a cold. Right. And on top of that, South Korean authorities say they have secured enough antiviral medicine to you know, treat COVID, which will be available starting next Monday. Now, should that help tame the spread of the virus here in the country? Well, so antiviral medication, the goal of the medication is really to prevent hospitalization due to COVID. Mm. The government uh, said that they procured 262,000 courses of the medication and by Monday, 177,000 of these courses uh, should be available. Um, the, the problem is, you know, we, we seem to be at or near the peak of the current surge and there have been 
Um, over the last eight weeks, about 4,700 people who are hospitalized due to COVID. And the question is, uh, how many of these cases, hospitalization cases, could have been prevented if they took the antiviral medication early in the course of their disease? There has been a problem getting enough doses of these medications prior to um, the procurement. But hopefully starting next week, we'll see that the people who are at high risk for developing severe disease due to COVID, that they will have access to this life-saving medication. Right, prevention is key in any case. Now, Dr. Tan, before I let you go, do you still recommend we get our COVID vaccine a shot now? I mean, will wearing masks be good enough? Right, so actually just today uh, in the United States, the FDA approved the most recently uh, updated version of the COVID-19 vaccine. It is targeted against KP.2 uh, and Moderna and Pfizer will be having their mRNA vaccines ready in the US probably by next week. So the KDCA has yet to announce a vaccination strategy for the updated 2024-2025 COVID vaccine. Um, but when it does become available, uh, getting an updated shot should be your best uh, option in terms of preventing uh, uh, infection and severe disease due to COVID. Certainly, as you mentioned, wearing a mask, avoiding crowded spaces, ventilating indoor spaces, washing your hands frequently, and staying home if you're sick. Mm -hmm. These are all important preventive measures as we had been doing during the height of the pandemic, if Koreans remember that we are in a surge and a lot of these measures should be followed now as well. All righty, Dr. Tan, thank you as always for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you.